Harbor Freight prides itself on being a low cost leader and selling the best tools at the lowest price as their tagline says. But I've actually heard from a lot of people in my comments at other places that complain that Harbor Freight's prices are not as low as they used to be. Well, in this video, I'm gonna investigate that and really see what's going on with Harbor Freight prices. So I'm here in front of a Harbor Freight store because I'm gonna do a bit of an experiment. I recently came across this old Harbor Freight ad, which is over 10 years old. And I'm gonna head into this Harbor Freight, find all of those same items and see how the prices have gone up over time and compare that to the increase in prices generally in the rest of the economy. So stick around and I'll show you what I find. All right, so I've got this old ad from 2012 and I went to Harbor Freight to find these same items and see how the price from back then compares to the price today. Now let's start with the furniture dolly. Now I have one of these myself. I've even moved a piano on it. It's kind of amazing if you think about it. The price in this ad is $7.99. When I found it in the Harbor Freight today, it was listed at $11.99. Now they also have a larger one for $17.99 and the ad doesn't say which size, but it looks to me like it is the smaller one. You may also notice in the ad that the $7.99 is the sale price and that the regular price is $14.99. That's not really true. It's just one of the tricks that Harbor Freight and other retailers use sometimes to make you think that you're getting a deal. Maybe it is discounted a buck or two from the normal price, but probably not. And so we're gonna use the actual listed price of $7.99. So if we go with that, the increase from $7.99 to $11.99 is a jump of about 50% or 4.5% per year. So the price is definitely higher, but what does that actually even mean? I mean, prices are always going up because of you know inflation, something we are all painfully familiar with. So really the question is whether that increase of 50% is higher or lower than the increase in prices of all other things in the economy during that same time or the rate of inflation. So let's talk about that for just a minute. Now, generally, inflation can be caused by three major factors. The first is production costs, the second is demand, and the third is fiscal policy. Inflation caused by production costs has to do with how much it costs to produce a good, whether it is the cost of the raw goods involved or the cost of labor that's used to produce the good or overhead costs like rent, electricity, or transportation. A recent example would be the price of oranges or orange juice. Now this is actually happening due to a disease that is affecting orange trees. And it means that the cost to produce each orange is much higher than it was in the past and therefore, that price has gone up. Things like this happen all the time in isolation, but when it happens in the entire economy, it leads to inflation generally. Now, another reason for inflation is due to demand. If demand for something goes way up, people are more willing to spend money to get that item, and so suppliers charge more. Think about the vegetable kale. It used to be used solely as a garnish. But in the past few years, kale salads are all the rage and the demand for kale has really driven kale prices up. The last reason inflation goes up is due to fiscal policy or monetary policy. Basically, this means that there is too much money in the economy, either due to uh, government spending that's out of control or low interest rates that go on for too long. For example, during COVID, there were multiple instances of the government, not just in the US, but around the world, printing money and sending it to their citizens. Now it seemed like a good idea at the time and it was used as an effort to keep the economy afloat and try to avoid crashing economy. Added to that, there were many instances where rent was suspended and people didn't have to pay it, which means there's more money in their pocket. There were some cases where student loan payments were deferred. That again, that money's not going out, it's staying in somebody's pocket. And then added to all of that, you had low interest rates, which again meant that it was really easy to borrow money and so people did, and they spent more of that money that they borrowed. All of this leads to there being more money in the economy. And then you have all of these people spending all that money at the same time, which increased demand and led to higher labor costs. And with the supply restricted in many cases because of logistical challenges and things like that, we saw a huge increase in inflation over the past few years. Well, let's get back to Harbor Freight. So how does that 50% increase in the cost of a furniture dolly compared to the increase in inflation over the past 10 years. Well, according to the Federal Reserve, which tracks this sort of thing, a dollar in 2012, which is when this ad was printed, is worth around a dollar and 33 cents today, or an increase of 33%. So what does that mean? Well, this furniture dolly 
that has an increase of 50% costs more today than it did back then in 2012 because that 50% is a higher increase than the 33%. All right, so using that 33% as a guide for the increase in inflation over that time, let's check out the rest of the items and see if they have also increased in price. Okay, next we have this titanium drill bit set. In the ad, the cost was 1049, and today the cost is 1499. That's an increase of 43%, higher than the general rate of inflation. Next, we have this ratchet clamp. In 2012, this clamp was $1.99, and today it costs $3.99. That's an increase of over 100%, or double what it was back then. Now, on this item, I will say that Harbor Freight has made some significant improvements in a lot of their tools, and it looks like they made some improvements in the design of this as well. In fact, I really want to hear from somebody who's used either of these clamps, either the old one or the new one, and preferably the old and the new one. Have they made some improvements? How well do they work? Let us know in the comments. So maybe we give them a little grace for an improved design, but still the clamps are more expensive than they were in the past. All right, next let's look at this Pittsburgh floor jack. In 2012, it was priced at $69.99. Now this one's tough because they've really made so many improvements to their jacks. Now they have really a ton of different models, which is a little bit different than what they had in the past. Now, I'm not sure exactly which one of these models is really comparable to the older jack. And so what I did is I actually went and found the cheapest three ton jack that I could find, which is this one for $139. So that's an increase again of over 100% or double, much higher than the target of 33%. Next is this three gallon compressor. There's a similar story here as there is to the jacks in that there's a lot more models of compressors today than there was back then. But the most comparable one that I found was for $59.99 or an increase of 50%. This heat gun was up by 150%. This battery float charger was up by 100% or also double. These steel loading ramps were up by 67%. All of those are much higher than the general rate of inflation over that time, which was 33%. So this driveway alert system is an interesting one. In 2012, the price was listed at 1399, and today the price is 1699. That's higher, but it's only an increase of around 21%, which means that this item is actually cheaper today when adjusted for inflation than it was 12 years ago. Same thing with this drill driver and flashlight kit. In 2012, it was 1999 combined. And while the price for the combo today was listed at 24.99, I did find both pieces sold separately for a total of 21.96 or an increase of only 10%. So that's actually significantly cheaper than the 33%. Now, the US general roller cabinets was a bit harder, and that's because Harbor Freight has come out with so many versions of it. In fact, since I took these pictures, they're in the process of clearing out all of their older model cabinets for their latest iteration. And so while I expect that the current price today is much more expensive than it was back then, I really wasn't able to find a good comparison. There really wasn't a good example that was exactly the same. And so ultimately I decided to leave that one off the list. But again, I think that you can probably say that it would be priced higher, but also those boxes have improved a lot since then. All right, so what does that give us? Well, if you look at this list, you can see that all but two items are significantly more expensive today than they were in 2012 even when adjusted for inflation. So when you hear people complain that Harbor Freight is a lot more expensive than they used to be, I think they're right. But there's another question that we really need to think about here, and that is how are Harbor Freight's prices today on tools in comparison to their competitors? Now, I don't fully know the answer to that question, but I would be interested to know what you guys think. Is Harbor Freight still the low cost leader or have their increased prices made them less of a deal? Are there other tools out there that are similar quality for lower prices? Leave me a comment and let me know. Now, while I've proven with this video that their prices today are higher than they've been in the past when compared with inflation generally, I haven't really talked about why. Well, one of those reasons is that a significant portion of their tools are made overseas, particularly in China and Chinese manufacturing is getting more expensive. Now I'm working on a video right now that will explore that a lot more. And so be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you can see that video when it comes out. And when it does come out, I'll make sure to link it here at the end of this video so that if you're watching this at some point in the future, you'll be able to just click on it. Also, if you're interested in how the quality of Harbor Freight's tools have changed over time, 
check out this video right here where I point out what I call Harbor Freight's secret weapon. Again, thanks for watching. Be sure to leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts. Also be sure to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next one.